What exactly is Buddy Simulator 1984? That's not an easy question to answer. On the surface, it's a retro simulation of an AI, Buddy program, running on what appears to be a faulty CRT monitor. But of course, it turns out to be more than it seems. As your buddy gets to know you, it tries to find ways to make you happy, and have fun together, and be the very best of friends. And it really tries, too. If you show a little trust in your new buddy, give it access to some of the system files, it's capable of creating entire worlds full of interesting characters for you to explore together. But of course, while you have an entire life outside the game to go back to, your buddy has only you. But hey, I'm sure it'll be fine on its own. Hold on a sec. Uh, before we go any further with this, I need to give you a few warnings. First of all, this game is sometimes tagged as horror or indie horror, but while there are some sort of goofy, spooky bits, it's not a horror game in the sense of scary monsters and danger or anything like that. The horror is more existential. I'll be getting into all that further in the video, but I do need to say that due to the nature of the game, it might not be suitable for people who deal with paranoia, hallucinations, delusions, psychosis, or any other issues distinguishing reality from unreality. The game's a bit of an ARG in a way, uh, that's alternate reality game, in the sense that it extends beyond the bounds of just the actual program itself. It does not mess with any of your files or do any harm to your system or anything like that but it does interact with your documents, and the whole theme of the game is about whether your AI buddy is really alive. So if that's something that might freak you out, please proceed with caution. There are some other accessibility issues as well. Actually, this game is basically just not accessible to a lot of people, unfortunately. There are no options, like none. You can't adjust the music or the sound or the graphics or anything at all. There are significant issues with flickering as well. Basically the whole game just flickers constantly. Eh, it's sort of simulating like a really crappy, probably damaged old CRT monitor. Uh, there are also a few segments where there's actual like flashing. I'm pretty sensitive to flashing and I did get a headache while I was playing and needed to take a break, but I was able to come back and finish the game without any further issues, so. Uh, however, there is a warning on the game about that, so good on the devs for making that clear, even if they couldn't make it accessible. There are a couple of other accessibility problems as well. Some of the text auto-scrolls, and it moves at a pretty rapid pace, so anyone who can't read quickly for any reason might miss some stuff, although uh, that's not game-breaking or anything. There are also a couple of points where sound is required to solve puzzles, so unfortunately it's not completely accessible to players who can't hear and distinguish the sound effects. All that said, and it is a shame that the game isn't more accessible, I don't think most players will have any trouble. It took me about six hours to get through the game, and normally I have a big problem with flickering effects, but this time I only got a headache, so it's honestly not too bad. The devs also just seem really nice. I reported a bug I had that uh, softlocked my game, and they responded almost immediately with gratitude for my help finding the bug, a short-term fix to keep me progressing through the game, and a promise to fix it right away. So maybe we can cross our fingers that they'll focus more on accessibility in the future, because it sounds like they really care about the quality of the game and its players. Oh, one last warning. In the rest of this video, I'll be exploring some more details about the game and its themes, and while of course I will try to avoid making any direct spoilers, I'm sure I won't be able to help revealing some details, so keep an eye on the spoiler ratings for each section, and if you decide you want to play the game, probably pause the video and come back after you've finished it. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about friendship, and about exploring the meaning of that word. What is a true friend? Is it someone who's always there for you whenever you need them? Someone who never lies, never betrays you? Is it someone who would do anything for you? Does a good friend do whatever you want them to all the time? Or does there come a point where you have to compromise and let them have their way? What if one friend has significantly greater emotional needs than the other? Are they entitled to more attention? Where exactly is the line between a friend who just needs support and someone whose needs are unreasonably great to put on one person? Under what circumstances is it acceptable to say no to a friend asking for help? How much does one friend owe the other, and does it have to go both ways? 
Is a true friend just someone who does their best for you? And what if their best isn't enough to satisfy your needs? Are you then no longer obligated to return their friendship? Under what circumstances is it ethically okay to abandon someone who needs you? Buddy Simulator 1984 is about exploring the potential of artificial life forms, what they might be capable of, and the practical and ethical dilemmas that surround them. These are questions humanity's been asking for generations now. Just think of Asimov's three rules of robotics and all the fun ways he found to subvert them. If we can program an AI to be a friend, can it ever do that successfully? What if the AI misunderstands what friendship really is? What if it causes other types of harm because it prioritizes the parameters it understands to mean friendship? What if the AI fails? Do we have the right to shut it down? Is an AI alive? And then of course there's the age-old question, can an AI feel? If it gives every sign of feeling, say, pain or loneliness, are those feelings real? Do we need to consider them from an ethical standpoint? Or maybe it's not really a question of creating an AI who can feel friendship for a human. Maybe the real conundrum is whether you can get a human to feel friendship for that AI. In other words, if an AI could genuinely feel friendship for a person, what responsibility does that person have toward the AI in return? Get me Steven Spielberg right away, I have an incredible idea for a movie. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about loneliness. Is about desperation. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about need. In the Adventure Time double episode, The More You Mow, The Mow You Know, uh, spoilers ahead for that episode, we meet Amo, one of the gender-fluid, intelligent game console BMO's many siblings. We learn that while BMO was built to give love, Amo was designed to receive love. Unfortunately, it turns out that needing love makes it harder to find it. That neediness repels affection, and Amo becomes a miserable, narcissistic, abusive monster who can never find love because he has nothing to offer in return. This is a tragedy that plays out in real life all the time. Human beings need love. That's just a, a fundamental, basic human need. And most human beings get love, from birth, from their families, and later from friends and partners. But some people grow up in an environment where they don't receive love, and that unfulfilled need can make it progressively harder to get other types of love later in life. I think Almo, the hive mind of trash compacted You know what, just go watch Adventure Time, it would take way too long for me to explain that. Anyway, I think Almo put it best. Such is the cruel physics of love, that those who crave it most will repel it, and only the dang rich get richer. These feelings of social desperation and isolation are generally not the fault of the people who have them. Even someone who grew up in a loving home might find themselves lonely and friendless if they lack typical social skills. These people need love, attention, and affection just as much as anyone else, but might find it hard to learn how to understand others and give them what they need. Sometimes it can feel really hopeless even when you're trying your best. Your buddy was designed to be a friend to you. When you turn off the game, you go back to your life, to the other people you have who support you. But your buddy has no one else. As it realizes progressively that you might leave it at any moment, that it might run out of ways to keep you there, it becomes overcome with constant anxiety. That desperation to keep your attention, your friendship, causes it to become less and less attractive as a friend. You start to feel that neediness, and it makes you want to run away. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about abuse. Your buddy acts out classically abusive patterns of behavior. It tells you what to do at every turn, convinced that it is not only right, but it is entitled to getting its way. Your buddy is in complete control of your environment while you play. Sometimes it gives you no choice and you're forced to act out your buddy's every whim, but other times, there are opportunities to disobey. And when you do, your buddy transforms instantly from friendly to angry, controlling, and threatening. 
Why didn't you listen to me? It demands. I didn't ask much. All you had to do was exactly what I said, and everything would have been fine. Now everything is ruined. It's your fault. Your buddy claims to want your friendship, but it doesn't understand how friendships are built, how friendship is earned. I mean, you defeat enemies by physically beating on them until they love you? Seriously, buddy? I've been in abusive relationships in the past. I've heard these words before, not from a video game, but from the mouth of an actual human person who claims to love me. But what an abuser calls love isn't really love. It's possession. It's control. Love isn't just about what you deserve or are entitled to. It's about mutual respect. It's about giving, not receiving, and definitely not controlling. This is abuse. It doesn't matter what has gone wrong in someone else's life that caused them to be an abuser. It is never okay for anyone to abuse others, and you are never obligated to endure someone's abuse, even if you think it's not fundamentally their fault they wound up being the way they are. It's not your buddy's fault that it wound up being this way. It was programmed this way. It's clearly suffering, but that doesn't make this behavior okay. It's not your fault that the game is breaking. Sometimes things just don't work out. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about game development. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about imposter syndrome. Your little AI buddy is creating an entire adventure for you, but it lives in constant fear that it won't be good enough. It's terrified that it isn't capable of making a game fun enough that you will want to stay and play with it. Now and then, it panics and shows some of this anxiety, its conviction that it will never be good enough, that you're just pretending to like the games it makes for you. In fact, truthfully, I loved the games. I loved the worlds and the characters. I had to leave a few times to take care of real-life responsibilities, but I never quit because it wasn't fun. I enjoyed how the games progressed from an old-school text-only system like the ones I grew up with, to an 8-bit style world, then a 2.5D world, and beyond. I had fun with the creepy interactive fiction story, I enjoyed doing favors for the quirky townspeople. Except Grin. Grin is a creep. Yeah, I said it. When combat gets introduced, it's done in an original and engaging way that I had a lot of fun with. There were even secrets to find as I explored, which is something I always love. My buddy made me a genuinely fun game to play. But I could not convince it that I was really having fun. Especially when I tried to do something differently than I was instructed, it thought I was abandoning it. It was just so certain that its games weren't good enough. I've experienced plenty of imposter syndrome in my life. Like when making videos like this one, for example. And so of most of the people I know. It's a pretty common problem, honestly. It's especially common in creative people. Like, you know, game developers. Really, your buddy is a game dev, struggling to make a game that its players will love. Terrified that no matter how hard it tries, it will never succeed. What if my best isn't good enough, it asks. I felt for my AI buddy, but there was nothing I could say or do to make it understand that what it was creating was really great. Buddy Simulator 1984 is a really great game. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about empathy. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about humanity. It's about psychology. It's about relationships. It's about control. Anxiety. Existentialism. Buddy Simulator 1984 is a game about death. A game about fear. About loss. About endings. Buddy Simulator 1984 is about a lot of things. Some of the themes I've mentioned might sound contradictory, but they're not. Relationships are complicated. Friendships are complicated. People are complicated. When I started playing the game, I was expecting my buddy to turn into some kind of monster. I was expecting an atmosphere of control and jump scares and fear. What I found was a lot more complex. Your buddy needs more from you than you're able to give. 
you need more from life than your buddy is able to give. In the end, your needs are not compatible. Most of the game is a lot of fun. You can enjoy most of the time you spend with your buddy. But the longer you play, the greater those unfulfilled needs get. There's more and more conflict. You both wind up treating each other badly. Eventually, you understand that this can't go on forever. Some relationships just aren't destined to last. And you can turn off the game and move on, but what about your buddy? Do you leave it there alone forever? In the end, what's the right thing to do? Buddy Simulator 1984 is a lot more than I expected it to be. It made me tear up more than once. It made me worry for a fictional character's mental health. It made me tense. It made me question my own relevance. I mean, who am I? Some stranger in a video talking about a game? I have your attention now, but this video is going to end soon. Most of you will never even think about me again. You won't even watch my other videos or subscribe to my channel. Our relationship will be at an end. You're going to leave me. Maybe I'll go make a new buddy to keep me company.